Number 28, integrated concepts. A 12 volt EMF automobile battery has a terminal voltage of 16 volts when being charged by a current of 10 amps. Letter A, what is the battery's internal resistance? All right, so we can use the formula over here on the right hand side to solve this. So we have the terminal voltage will be equal to the battery's EMF minus the current flowing through the battery multiplied by its internal resistance. Now this formula is for when the battery is supplying uh, energy or potential to a certain load. If the battery is being charged, simply take this minus sign and turn it into a plus. All right. Now all we have to do is just plug in the values. The terminal voltage they told us is 16. The battery's EMF is 12. The current flowing through it is going to be 10. And we got to calculate internal resistance. So subtract the 12 from both sides. So we got 4 is equal to 10R. So R uh, will be equal to then 0 0.4 ohms. That's the internal resistance. It's that simple, right? That's kind of nice, that little formula. All right, so just remember to flip that sign. Letter B, what power is dissipated inside the battery? So in order to figure out the power inside the battery, we would like to know the current uh, inside the battery, which we know, squared, <clears throat> multiplied by then the resistance inside the battery, which we just found. So we can simply now take the 10 squared, multiply it by 0.4, so that'd be 100, multiplied by 0.4, so that's going to be 40 watts. And then letter C. At what rate, rate, okay, in Celsius, degrees Celsius per minute, will its temperature increase if its mass is 20 kilograms and has a specific heat of 0.3 kilocalories per kilogram, assuming no um, heat escapes? Okay, so uh, first thing is I see that they give me this, you know, sp specific heating kilocalories, right? So just do the conversion, so 0.3 kilocalories per kilogram Celsius times then kilocalories on the bottom, uh, joules on the top. Now for every one kilocalorie, there's 4,184 joules, All right? So simply, simply take the 0.3 and multiply that by 4184. So that's going to be the specific heat here is going to be about 1255, 1,255 now, uh, joules per kilogram Celsius. All right. Hopefully you can read my hieroglyphics. So um, now what I realize is, uh, you know, if they're giving me specific heat and mass, maybe I should be thinking about this formula, Q equals M, Q equals MC delta T. Now, um, remember, there we just calculated power, okay? And what does power represent? Well, it represents an energy rate, right? Watts is simply a joule per second. Or in other words, it's energy per time, right? So remember that Q is just heat energy, but it's still energy. So instead of writing Q here, let me just write an E. All right, let me just write an E because it's energy. All right, it's just heat energy, but that's what they're, we're assuming. Assuming no heat escapes and all the all this energy is converted basically to heat energy. Now watch, if I take the left-hand side and I divide it by time, well, then I can do the same thing with the right-hand side. Isn't that right? Now, what I realize is when I divide both sides by time, this is energy per time, and that is known as power. Okay, power. Now watch, uh, this is mass times the specific heat, so that's fine. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna group these two into one variable now. So this is basically the rate of temperature change. Now beware that this is going to be, so I'll just write this as a, uh, a single variable now, temperature change rate, okay? Because that, that's this whole thing. Just be aware that this is gonna be calculated per second. So we'll probably have to do a conversion at the end. But now, all we have to do is simply plug in the power, plug in the mass, plug in the specific heat we just found, and then calculate for delta TR. So the temperature rate is gonna be 40, divided then by parentheses, 20 times one, two, five, five, so we're going to get a value here of about 0 0.00159. Now remember that that's going to be in degrees Celsius per second, but they want to know per minute. So what do we have to do? Simply got to get rid of the seconds. Seconds on the top, minutes on the bottom. 60 seconds in a minute. So take that value, multiply it by 60. And bada bing, bada boom. There it is. So the final answer here is going to be 0 0.0956 degrees Celsius per minute. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in. Hopefully that helped. Please remember to help us out and subscribe, and I'll see you soon. Take care.